morning. I'm in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Those are the words of our living God, Savior, and Creator all alone. If no one else can ever understand anything else about what I say in these sermons or anything else I have written or will talk to someone about, perhaps you about, I can tell you this. Jesus Christ is the Son of the own, only true living God, Jehovah. He is God Himself and was God Himself in the flesh. He did die on the cross for the world's sins and He was risen from the dead on the third day. And yes, when he was finished with his work here, he left this world to go home to heaven to sit on the right-hand side of great God Jehovah, his heavenly Father. And then, as soon he was adjusted and settled in and God Jehovah said, Now, son, do this. Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, sent the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, to be with us here, all alone, individually, to keep us in the effort-making situation and making in our minds, hearts, soul, and spirits to know without a doubt Jesus Christ is living God, Savior, Creator all alone. But first of all, He is infinite God. Infinite God first with Almighty Great Je God Jehovah and the holiness of who they all are as well as Himself, Jesus Christ. No one else can ever say these things about themselves being a God or God. Jesus Christ is the only true living infinite God deity alone. And yes, his heavenly father, who was not God and savior to Jesus Christ, but he is our God, savior and creator alone with God, Jehovah and God, the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is our God, savior and creator alone. And God, Jehovah is not the only one to have spoken to me something like this. If you want to go back and make something different in your life in the past, start doing it now because you recognize when you look to your past Instead of looking forward, you miss a few opportunities in your own personal life with Christ God Jesus. So I begin to say this. I made a lot of stupid, dumb mistakes. I accepted Jesus Christ as my God and Savior a long time ago when I was a young teenager. I always knew him as Christ God Jesus. But I raised my hand one day when someone said, Would you like to find Jesus Christ, accept Jesus Christ as God and Savior and Creator alone? And therefore, I rose my hand. I let God Jesus know that Inwardly and outwardly, I was willing to show people around me in this church setting that I had accepted Jesus Christ as Almighty God, Savior, and Creator alone. And when I did so at that moment in time, I didn't realize how much more in my life things were going to change. And I was only about 14. But now, it's a whole different time frame for me. I'm here. I'm much older. And I want to share God's Word, God's message from the Bible, the Book of Life. If you have never had or shared an experience personally, one-on-one -on -one with Christ God Jesus intimately in your life, from your heart to Him, by praising Him, worshiping Him, confessing Him, and being a disciple of Him, of His, here on this world, then you have missed the whole point of being here. Watch His disciples in the book of life, the Bible. Listen to their words. Watch their stories as you're reading those words. Listen to what they have done and what they accomplished at that moment in time. No other people have ever come forward in the absolute rushing moment and power in the love and blood of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who was with them all at that moment in time. But they had to share that good news with people around them. And so they went out to many different places in their lifetime. And they shared that good news about the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, being here for each and every one of us. It wasn't just for a certain amount of people in this world. It was for each and every one of us. God had to know that his children was go were going to be safe down here without him. So he told his disciples before he left this world forever. He said this, I am not going to leave you here as orphans. I'm going to send you a comforter. And his name is the Holy Spirit. It talks about the Holy Spirit all the way through the Bible. Listen to what they say about the Holy Spirit. Even... When Mary became pregnant with Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, she didn't know anything about what the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, meant to her. She didn't know what that meant. What it, What is and who is the Holy Spirit? Well, God said, I will envelop you. You will become pregnant with the Christ, the Messiah, my son. And therefore she was. And she did have him. She had Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. No one knew who he was by name until he became here 
in this world, man of flesh, God in spirit. Isn't that something to think about? It's wonderful. It's precious. It's miraculous. God can do all, the, all things. There's nothing impossible with him. Matthew 19, 26. With God, Jesus, with God, all things are possible. Remember, in our life here, in this world, we have a tendency to think that God is not capable to be with us or incapable of being with us because we have sinned way too much. Well, let me tell you something. If we went by the marks in our life, the checks in the squares of the boxes next to our name, in the book we keep for ourselves, each and every one of us right now on this world, right up until this moment in time, up until his return, would simply say this on God's return. Sorry, I'm not worthy. I'm too guilty. I love you. I believe in you. I know you're Jesus Christ, my God and Savior alone. You died on the cross for the world's sins. I believe you risen, rose from the dead on the third day. I love you. I worship you, but I'm a sinner. I'm just too bad for you, God Jesus. I'm too bad to be with you home in heaven. Well, simply say this to yourself. God Jesus spoke to his disciples a whole lot when he was here as the great Messiah, great God himself in the flesh, God in spirit, man of flesh. He told them many things in his life and about the story about who he was as living with his family. He never shared heaven with them. He just shared what they knew that they could continue to advise on with people in front of them in the future when they became a disciple of God and more and more growing in their heart, mind, spirit, and soul after Jesus Christ left. It's something that they could identify with. God, Jesus says, when I'm here, I have to identify with my children. So they identified with him as Messiah, the Christ, God. And they knew that. But Jesus Christ, God said, I am still your friend, but he is God first. And they worshiped him as God, almighty God, the Christ, the Messiah, the savior of this world. And they loved him for that. And they loved him because he said also, you are my friends and family. But because of who he is, he said, I want you to know, I'm here, for, I'm here first to be with my children, but at the same time, I can be here personally one-on-one, -on -one, not just with you here in front of me, his disciples or people that he witnessed to and did sermons to in front of these congregations that they stood outdoors somewhere and he preached the gospel at that time from the scrolls and also he was God. So he told them many things, miraculous, miraculous miracles happened. When he was there with these people because he cared so much he loved the world so much and it says so in john 3 16 for god loved the world so much he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe on him shall have everlasting life don't you want that everlasting life jesus christ our god and savior is absolutely precious he wants to know more about you with him now he knows everything about you and every thing about each and every child he has created from the beginning of time of creating mankind and woman. He also knows that people says this, well, I'm here and I'm good, but I'm not. So I'm not sure exactly how to hold this in my life, in my heart, in my way of thinking, how I think about myself, because I don't feel very good about me. I don't feel I'm any good about God's work. What can do God do for me and with me that I can go out there and be productive in sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't even know what to say when I'm out there. So I used to think about those things many times throughout my youth. And I prayed a lot about God, Jesus, telling me the words that I needed to have to be with people one-on-one, -on -one, to share with them God's word. I didn't know God's word very well. I didn't have any scriptures memorized, not very many, maybe a couple, but not enough for me to say I'm going to be confident in going out and doing a sermon or spending time with people in a Bible study, as in leading it. I never did anything. But then I decided one day, many years ago, about 20, that I'm going to start praising God, Jesus, every single, every single day, just all of the time. And I prayed and asked him to, remember, to help me to remember to praise him. Because I got busy and my mind would go other directions. I just did that because I wanted to. However you do your work with God, Jesus, however you identify your heart with God, Jesus being your God alone, is up to you and him. I did it my way, the way I wanted to. So I began to praise him. After two years, he spoke words into my heart. And these are the words he said. I'm here. I'm really here. Completely separate from my thought process. I wasn't even thinking about praising God at that moment in time, I was getting ready to go to work and I was in my car driving and these words just popped into my head or my heart, excuse me. I'm here. I'm really here. 
And they are in my heart, from my heart, into my thoughts. They are connected. But it came from my heart, and I knew exactly that it was God, Jesus' voice in my heart saying these words to me. Because I wanted to be with him so much more than I was in my past that I didn't know how else to be with him. I read the word of God. I went to church occasionally. I still praised him. I recognized him. I confessed him as Jesus Christ, our God and Savior alone, always. But I never knew how to draw close to him. Like in James 4, 8, it says this, when you draw close to God, God will draw close to you. Well, how do I do that, Lord God, Jesus? How do I do that? How do I get close to Almighty God? Unless you choose to be with me to help me to do that, I can't know how to do that on my own. So I prayed more and I kept on praying. And the closer I drew myself to God, the closer he drew himself to me. Is, a, is it a great and almighty experience? You better believe it. Does he really know me better than myself? Absolutely. He created me. He created you. He knows what's in your life. He knows what's in your heart. He knows all of the thoughts that you have thought in the past, right now, present, and all the way into the future, all the way up to the return of God Jesus or throughout your life here. He knows every single thing about you. He knows your tastes, your likes, your dislikes. He knows your comfort zone. He knows your wording. He knows your sense of humor. He knows everything about you that you like in the taste of activity or sensational things about music, poetry, dancing, playing instruments, mus uh, music as in writing music, perhaps acting, a career, sports, exercise, eating habits, foods you love, foods you don't. Remember, he knows everything about you. And the more you seek out Christ God Jesus, it does say in the Bible, seek ye first the heaven, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So what are those things? I don't know, but I do know this. I've been having fun playing extra special kind of sports like pickleball and racquetball and things like that and rollerblading and jogging and walking a lot more than I have in the past. And I need to do those activities because I am older. I need to stay in better shape. I wanted to lose weight. I've lost some. I've lost some body fat, maybe a pound or two. But at the same time, he's teaching me how to eat healthy. I pray about it every single time I wake up in the morning. I ask God Jesus to help me to eat healthy. To what foods does he want me to eat for the day? And even the drinks water or a special drink that I like, favorite pops or something like that, or a juice, whatever it might be for you. I pray and ask my God, Jesus, to help me in all areas of my life to grow, to become more healthy and more wealthy in my life, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, and financially. It is a possibility. With God, Jesus, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. And we can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. I will look up the verse on that next and next time God will bring it to my heart and I will tell you. Remember, we can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us, but we have to rely on him to do it for us and with us all at the same time. It does make sense. When I'm out doing something and I don't really want to do it, I do it anyway and then I praise God all the way through it. For instance, like jogging, not my favorite activity to do, but boy, it sure does work the works for me personally. I've lost some inches because of that, and I've gotten much healthier for my age. I like that. So I go out and I say, okay, just a walk for today, and then he encourages me. I'll just keep thinking I should be jogging. I should be jogging. So I start out really slow, and as time goes on, I start warming up, and my body says, okay, we've adjusted. You're good. So I just jog really slow, my pace, my way, where I go. It's easy, flat, and when I make it out there four miles or five miles or six miles or eight miles, and it's been a while since I've done the long ones, but the last couple of days, I, I jogged slowly, but my pace, four miles. Then I played about four hours of pickleball yesterday. No jogging. Today, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm a little tired. But see what I'm saying? I praise God all the time. I have this wonderful rhythm and song in my heart that just praises God, Jesus, continuously when I'm thinking about him. And when I'm in my heart thinking about who Jesus Christ is as living God, Savior, and Creator, and I just yell out, quietly in my heart, in my mind. Praise God, Jesus. Thank you for everything in my life. And it works. Live your life from your heart. Don't live your life from your thoughts alone and disregard Jesus Christ, our God and Savior, as the only true living God, Savior, and Creator alone and the only way to eternal life for you and all. Does he choose who he wants home in heaven with him? Yes, he does. 
But at the same time, it could be you. Don't give up hope. Say, God, Jesus, I need help. Help me. Send someone in my life to help me. Send someone in my life to help me to do better, to be better, to start a church, to start reading the Bible. And thank you, God, Jesus, for helping me to read the Bible on the on a daily basis or as much as I can during a, a week or a month so I can gain strength and joy from your word in the Bible to memorize scriptures and give me that hope because those scriptures that you memorize and that I have memorized gives me strength. And the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's a scripture in the Bible. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Because when we read the word of God, it is truth. It is fact. It is a melody in our life, in our heart, in our mind, and in the songs that we sing, whether or not it's through our voice, through actual singing, or just praising him in life inwardly and outwardly in discussing people's hearts and lives with Christ God Jesus, or not just being with them in a friendly way, in a family way, saying to yourself, all of these people here, I don't even know. I've introduced myself today with these people. Now they know my name and I know theirs, but I don't know them. So I start talking with people, just finding out things about them. And now they are all on my prayer list. These are the people I met yesterday. There was about 10 people yesterday playing pickleball. I stopped, asked them if they minded if I joined them for a while. That was after I played two and a half hours with my friends beforehand. And they said, sure, come on. I said, God, Jesus, they're sweet. So I went in there, I sat and I started talking to people, introduced myself to everyone. And we talked a little bit, each of us, and it was fun. These people were just precious. And now they're all on my prayer list. Praise God, Jesus, for that. They don't even know it. I don't have to know them by name individually all of the time throughout my whole life here. I just pray that everyone I meet, say hi to, introduce myself to, bump into, wave to, smile at. I say, thank you, God, Jesus, for putting them on my prayer list. And I don't even know their name or who they are or where they're from. But God remembers. He remembers everything because he is everything. He's infinite God. Believe he is infinite God, infinite God alone. And then our God, Savior and Creator all alone throughout eternity. Praise God, Jesus, for that. People need to know more about who Jesus Christ is personally with himself with you and with me, personally, one-on-one. -on -one. It's not about going to a church group situation or even a Bible study. It's not about studying the Word of God so much that you have all of these scriptures memorized and you still don't know that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with Christ God Jesus with you. That saves us. That is the salvager that we need in our life to prevent us from doing things that we don't want to do. Perhaps becoming more and more depressed or oppressed, um, angry, frustrated, miserable, down, just in a way that you can just get in a low stupor. It happens with people down here. It happen, It's happened with me. But I get immediately into my heart and I start praising God Jesus. And I start saying, thank you, God Jesus, for helping me to get through a, another bad moment in my life, perhaps another bad day. And I get depressed or oppressed and I feel frustrated when I can't go into my heart and be with God Jesus the same as it was the day before, which was really... High, you know, highly elevated to the point where I was uplifted, feeling good and light in my heart. I didn't feel the oppression or anything, but still I had to pray to get through it. And God got me through another day. Is it easy when we are angry and depressed and oppressed and just disappointed in life or in our life, what's not going on, what has been going on, that's not a good thing. And we're just saying, how can God help me? How can he help this whole situation? Well, put your heart into your thoughts and say, thank you, God, Jesus. I pray I am going to confess you right this very second as Jesus Christ, God, Savior, and Creator alone. My God, Savior, and Creator alone. And there is no other God in existence, period. And just say this, I claim that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. And then say, thank you, God, Jesus, for writing my name in the book of eternal life. And thank you, God, Jesus, for helping me to be uplifted, not depressed anymore not spiritually down, not oppressed, not down to the point where I can't get up and motivate myself to go out and find myself a different position and a job, a whole brand new career, perhaps start a business. Thank you, God, Jesus, for helping me to work these things out. I need money. We need money. Thank you, God, Jesus, for helping us to stand on our own two feet with you spiritually, trusting in you that you will lead people into our lives, lead information into our lives, Give us the handful of scrapings of money from someplace that we can come up with. Maybe borrow from friends or family or, or borrow from a bank 
and get something going for a business and thank you God Jesus for blessing this business that we would ha that we've had in our heart and mind for quite some time or just a short time and then say thank you God Jesus that it's going to be absolutely successful with enough money coming in that we can bar up uh, make enough money to pay back that loan that we borrowed and have still plenty of left over to pay our bills and have fun and start a savings account Praise God, Jesus. Thank you for all of these things. And just say, I pray and ask all of these things in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. If you're not a warrior, and if a warrior, that's W-O-R-R-I-E-R, I think. Warrior, not a warrior. But if you're not a warrior, then become a warrior. <laughs> if you're not a warrior, then become a warrior. W-A-R-I-O-R. I'm here to have some fun, but I'm here to be serious because I know I've lived my past life. It's there. It's behind me. Sometimes I am neglectful about right now, the present, and moving forward into the future. But every single day when I get up, I say a prayer to help me to move forward. And this is one of them. This is moving forward, giving out God's precious word. And his disciples knew that how this was so important for people around them to know how precious, precious it is to be with Christ God Jesus personally, that they exploited themselves going out into public and standing there in the middle of the streets and started teaching the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and start telling them about Christ God Jesus, that he died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he's no longer here, but they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They explained these things to them. Did they understand it all? The disciples and even the people around them, they understood enough to teach it because God gave them the words and enough understanding through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, to get going and get moving forward with people around them. Even the people who are in these big synagogues, uh, synagogues that were sitting there in these thrones with these robes on and crowns and stuff like that, pearls and diamonds and rubies, they would sit there listening to these disciples saying to themselves, how can they talk so elegantly because these are uneducated people? It's the Holy Spirit. God told his disciples, don't worry about when you get in front of these people in these big, huge places that will look down on you. I will give you those words within the hour. The words will come. Don't ever worry about that. And you know what? I know exactly what he's talking about. The Holy Spirit has been sent here to give us the new absolute life and living word to us from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit, who is now God with us all, each and every one of us. The words just come. I pray and ask God Jesus every single day that he will give me all words from beginning, middle, and ending through each sermon or through each time I'm talking to a person about Christ God Jesus and whatever upliftment or prayer that he wants me to say, I always pray and ask it in Jesus Christ God's name that all of the words will come from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. Never neglect who the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit is. People have made fun of his name, but he's God. He's God here with us right now, each and every one of us. We may not be able to see him or even hear him, but the words that are truth and fact and absolutely righteous in the value of who he is as living God, Savior, and Creator all alone is in the Word of God and it's in our heart. And we know better to not deny him. He is God. God says it in the Word of in the Bible, in the in the book of life. If you deny my son, I never knew you. You've just denied God, his son, Jesus, who died on the cross for the world's sins for your sin. I'm not here to make a mockery of anything else or anyone else in this world. I'm saying this. I have been forgiven by Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Even those people in jail, or perhaps not in jail anymore, who have murdered or killed someone will be saved. Not necessarily every one of them, and not necessarily every single person in this world who has lived a really great life and never harmed anyone. God, Jesus says this. It's by faith you are healed. And by faith in your life and in, and in the love that you show mercy for people around you in praying for them in praying with them and sharing the good news, the word of Christ God Jesus from the book of life, the Bible, then you will know within your heart there's no doubt about the existence of God because you see people's lives change around you, in front of you and around you. It may be at a distance. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be your son, your daughter, your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, your grandchildren, your own children families, relatives, friends, people that you don't even know you prayed for, and they just floated out of the room, 
after giving you a big hug, after praying for them and helping them to understand Christ God Jesus has just saved you because you just confessed him, you've prayed for them, and they just have this great big smile from ear to ear, and they walk out that room smiling like they're just floating on air. I've had that happen to me a lot of times. It's not an anguish thing to be thinking about Christ God Jesus. It's not a thing to say that yourself to say to yourself that if you're here with God Jesus, I have to, I have to, I have to. It's not like that at all. He says, Sheila, if you want to, then do it. If not, I'm listening to your heart. And even right down to the food I like to eat or not eat, if he says to eat something in a particular dinner or lunch or breakfast, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, I kind of wanted something else, then I would pray about it. And he say, well, then eat this. This is really great for you too. It's not a matter of an adjustment that we have to be with him. He's just here being with us already. He's already here. I will be with you until the end of time. That's what he told his disciples. He's here with you in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit, and in your soul. You know Jesus Christ is God alone and that there is no other God, and he does exist. God does exist. Romans 12, 3 says this, For God has given to each man the measure of faith. Don't ever worry about your life and your work and your thoughts and everything you've done or perhaps doing right now. You can change. If I can change, I know you can. I haven't done anything horribly bad to anybody personally, but I've said some things, yelling and screaming and stuff like that. I'm not proud of it. But I kept praying and asking God to give me fulfillment and hope and peace and calm in my heart and in my mind so that when I am getting upset, I calm down really quick and I watch the words that I say and how I say them. The tone of the voice is very important. If I go outside of that tone of voice that I should be in for being better when I'm upset, I immediately come back into my heart saying, thank you, God, Jesus, for helping me to this just deal with this better with you in my life. And then I leave that situation, whatever it might be, that's upsetting me. And I go into my heart. If I can leave that area, I leave it. And I just start praising God and saying, thank you, God, Jesus, for calming me calming me down. I don't want to be angry. I want to be, be with you, God, Jesus. And I want to be a friend. I want to be a great friend, a great wife, a great mom, a great mother-in-law, a great grandma, a great sister, a great daughter. I want to be a, just a great person in a way that's not telling me I'm great, 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 but I want to be so good to myself that I can say to myself, I am a good person. And sometimes I'm a great person because I do really good things for people. I don't tell myself that when I'm doing anything. I just accept it and say, you know what, God, Jesus, thank you for helping me to do that. That was awesome. I don't think about me being great. I think about Christ God, Jesus being great for helping me to do that. But at the same time, as someone else behind the scenes, behind my back says that I'm a great person, well, thank you for that. Praise God, Jesus, because I tell a lot of people about a lot of great people around me, and I mean it from my heart. They're wonderful, great, awesome people. My friends and my family, I love it. I love meeting new people. And not only that, I had some fun yesterday with one particular person. Her name is Sharon, which is the name of my sister. And she is like 84 years of age, and she was playing pickleball out there. And she was doing terrific. I said, you go for it, Sharon. You're doing great. And she just smiled. She thought it was just great that she was out there. I think she's a great person. 84 out there and playing pickleball. And she's not the only one. I've met other people in their 80s and 90s who have been out there playing sports, walking, swimming, jogging, bicycling, staying up with themselves, with God, Jesus in their life. And knowing that when they pass, that Jesus Christ, God is waiting for them in heaven. And on his return, the dead in Christ shall rise first and then the living from this world. That will happen in the twinkling of an eye. Remember, in the works of who Jesus Christ is in our own life personally, whatever we do to be successful in our life, to be here spiritually for ourselves personally so we can be with someone else better around us that's around us a lot or a little, maybe never, and then we meet them in our life maybe one time, maybe that one time when we have spent so much time with God or just enough, we have that kind of faith and love in growing us with God Jesus in our life personally, that when we meet that one or two people, we start talking about Christ God Jesus and they just stand there and listen, speechless. And maybe they will turn around and say, you know what? I believe God does exist. That person just blessed me because I've always wondered how they know for sure. That's happened so many times from the beginning of time. How do people know? Well, if you look into your heart, you already know from birth. 
when you grow up to be bigger and you start making your own decisions, you already know if you deny God, it doesn't, if you deny God, it does not feel comfortable. It feels awkward. It feels like a situation that's not supposed to be there in your thoughts. And that's true. It's not. Romans 12, 3. For God is given to each man the measure of faith. The faith to believe he exists. He created us. Remember that. Romans 12, 3. One more time. Matthew 16, 24. Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So that's what I'm doing on a daily basis. Do you do that too in a different way? Fantastic. Awesome. You're a great person. We are here to show our love and support and give prayers when it's needed. I may not be with that many people praying with them one-on-one, -on -one, but I have prayed for many people I know and mostly people I do not know one-on-one. -on -one. That's a church situation. It's not happening right now because right now we are in the middle of a pandemic. So therefore, there's not very many churches are open. That's mine. But at the same time, I still can pray for people one-on-one -on -one with my family and I can pray for them. God reaches out all the way around the world and that's what I do. I pray for everyone in this world to find Jesus Christ as living God's Savior and Creator alone. Pray for our politicians to know Jesus Christ as God's Savior and Creator alone. Pray for our police officers. Pray for the firemen and all the medical people who are helping us through this pandemic. There are so many precious people in this world that we need to be praying for that carries a heavy load on their shoulders to help defend us, lawyers, and to help take care of us and whatever that may be, caretakers. Let people know that you care when you do see them and you know the kind of work that they do. Just simply say, God bless you. You are doing a fantastic job. And by the way, God's just telling you that uh, you're going to find someone really special in your, in your life sometime in the future and know that it's from him. This special thing, this special person going on with this person, it's going to be a guy and you've been looking for a husband. So praise God, Jesus, you might find that person right away. I don't know who that's going to be, but someone out there, a beautiful young lady has been praying for God to lead her a young man into her life. Well, praise God, Jesus. He wants me to tell you right now, it's going to happen soon, but be patient. Pray and ask God, Jesus, for all things in your life to happen His way, His will, and His timing. It's perfect. You can't get better than that. In Romans 12, 2, it says this, Be ye not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may know what is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. With God, Jesus, all things are possible. Remember, it's us personally that have to change. We need to change to be with others better. It's our responsibility as a child of God, his creation, his daughters, his sons, his servants, his children, to make an effort to change on a moment-to-moment -moment basis practically to be better than we were the day before. It's not a hard thing to do when you just practice it on a daily basis. It gets easier and easier and easier if you have a bad temper, I pray right now in Jesus Christ, God's name alone, that he's going to teach you how to not have that bad temper, but to use your voice in a better way for more time with God. Jesus, in praising him, if you want to raise your voice, raise your voice for him in prayers, honor and glory and acceptance, and also reverence, honor and acknowledgement about who he is as living God, Savior and Creator alone. Yell that out in the streets. Yell that out in the restaurants if you're mad at someone. That'll get people's attention. It's better than the other way that I've seen from TV live shows that they're just saying these awful, despicable things in public, in public, and you know, out there in the streets and in restaurants and hotels, and people are standing there going, "What's going on with them?" Yell out God's name. Thank you, God Jesus, for this beautiful, beautiful day. I feel upset, but praise God Jesus, you're gonna help me get over it. <laughs> Have fun with it. It works. And say, I pray and ask that in Jesus Christ, God's name alone. Say that all out loud sometime in the future with a bunch, bunch of people around you. If you're mad, you want to yell, yell that out and mean it from your heart. God will help you. And he'll give you the words to say it too. He's powerful. I have some websites here I want to correct. I'm just going to give them all out. And these are going to be some corrections on some of them. First uh, website is the Twitter. Twitter.com forward slash ministry with God, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash heartline ministry, writers ebook.com forward slash authors forward slash schoonover, S-C-H-O-O-N-O-V-E-R, writers ebook.com forward slash shopping, Sheila's ministry, that's S-H-E-I-L-A, Sheila's ministry.tumblr.com. I want people to know that when I see 
that I, when I say these websites, there's something to be valued for me. Not necessarily everyone will comment, comment or say it's a great place to be, but at the same time, they're going to say this, that's an awesome place to be. So I want people to know that when they read the blogs, when they read the tweets, remember when you read the blogs and the tweets and listen to this site right here, it's all about Christ God Jesus. In my tweets, it always starts out every single tweet that says this, Jesus says, Jesus says, and then I finish the tweet. That's because I pray and ask God Jesus for all of the words from him alone through the holiness of who they all are, the Holy Spirit. It's not about him all the time directly, but it does mean this. Life is here. Life is out there. If you want to know more about who you are with Christ God Jesus, then ask him to give you words to write. For instance, a blog or do a sermon or write a book, an e-book or just a regular book. Let your heart and your mind and your thinking say to you this. I'm here. I can do it. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me and go with that thought for today. God bless. Have a wonderful day.